Hello everyone, good morning. I'm here in the healthware office this morning because um, I'm working <laughs> um, and no cats are here to interrupt. So welcome, this is our heart healthy nutrition class here online still this month. My name is Melissa, I'm healthware's registered dietitian and personal trainer here to talk all things heart health with you today. Uh, our topic for today is oils, all about oils. That topic was requested last month, and it's way more fun to do topics that you request. So that's what we're talking about today. I have a couple show and tell items around here this morning. Um, so we will get to those items. If you have any questions about this topic today, please let me know. Type in the little comment section at the bottom of this video, whether you're watching live or the recorded version later on. I love answering questions and hearing from you, so please don't hesitate. Let me know. With that, let's get going. All about oils. That's what we're talking about today. So we have many, many options when it comes to oils these days um, and trying to choose the right one for whatever you're making in the kitchen. Um, whether it's cooking or baking or salad dressings, drizzling, whatever it is. Uh, some are well known like olive oil and some are less familiar, maybe like avocado oil or walnut oil. Um, before we discuss the pros and cons of each individual oil, because we will get to that, uh, I want to talk about one important thing that relates to all the oils, and that is smoke point. It is important to talk about this. Um, an oil's smoke point, if you've never heard of that before, that's the point at which the oil starts burning uh, and smoking. So it's a temperature the point is a temperature at which the oil starts burning and smoking. Smoke point. If you heat an oil past its smoke point, it not only can harm the flavor, but it also degrades many of the nutrients in the oil, and the oil will release harmful compounds called free radicals. And that's not something we want. Just a little more background on that. Free radicals uh, damage cells in our bodies and can actually cause really bad health issues um, like inflam uh, chronic inflammation and also cancer actually. Free radicals are what can cause cancer. Um, free radicals can come from many sources, not just the food we eat. Uh, we can get it from cigarette smoke, from environment pollutants, um, as well as radiation, drugs, pesticides. There's a whole number of things that we can get free radicals from. Um, on the flip side of free radicals are antioxidants. You've probably heard of those before. Antioxidants counteract free radicals and prevent them from damaging our body tissues. Uh, we can get, get antioxidants um, from eating certain foods, so uh, plants. That's where we get antioxidants from. The main dietary antioxidants are vitamin C, vitamin E, and beta carotene. Sometimes people will call that vitamin A, but uh, beta carotene is actually the antioxidant. Okay, so back to smoke point here for another minute. Um, because the smoke points, um, because of smoke points, and the negative uh, effects that those have on our health and the free radicals, uh, you want to make sure that you're using the correct oil for whatever purpose that you're using. So um, a quick disclaimer though, just because an oil is good for a specific purpose, like it has a high smoke point, um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. Okay, um, so the few different types of purposes we have for cooking that we use oils for, right? So frying, that's number one. I don't necessarily recommend frying your food very often. Uh, that's a lot of extra calories from fat, from the oils. But if you're going to fry something, you want to use an oil that does have a high smoke point. Um, a high smoke point is typically one that's above 375 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And um, options for this would be not all inclusive, but Options for this would be canola oil, 
coconut oil, avocado oil, and vegetable oil. Um, Molly said something. Molly says, I've been using olive oil for years to fry tortillas. So, um, olive oil, if it is, um, there's something, I think it's maybe just called pure olive oil, or just olive oil. Um, that one tends to be a little bit better for higher temperature frying. Uh, extra virgin olive oil, as we'll discuss a little bit later, extra virgin olive oil is actually not meant to be used as frying. Um, sauteing is fine, so like very small amount to sear, um, saute things in a pan. Uh, deep frying, extra virgin olive oil is not meant to be used for that. Um, and again, I'll talk more specifically about extra virgin olive oil here in just a minute, um, but for frying in general, you want to use one that has a high smoke point. Like I said, canola oil, avocado oil, vegetable oil. Um, oh, I think I read the wrong list. I'm sorry. So high smoke point would be canola oil, um, vegetable oil, avocado oil, safflower oil, peanut oil. Um, Molly says, oh, yikes, my bad. <laughs> I changed it. Yeah, I'm, you may want to try a different oil. Um, for the high temperature frying type of things, um, not the extra virgin olive oil. Uh, so like I said, canola oil, avocado oil, vegetable oil, safflower oil, and peanut oil. My disclaimer though, those oils are not all necessarily healthy oils, but they are the ones that have the high smoke points that are better used for frying to prevent free radicals from being uh, released into what you're eating. All right. Another purpose we use oils for, of course, is for baking. Um, for this, of course, you want to use an oil with more of a neutral flavor um, and one that doesn't have too low of a smoke point. You want it to be uh, at least at the temperature that you're baking your item at. Um, and a neutral flavor, meaning like extra virgin olive oil, tends to have a bit of a flavor. So ideally, you're not using that unless you're making an olive oil cake which is a type of cake. Uh, so options for baking that I suggest would be like canola oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, and vegetable oil. Again, those are not necessarily all oils that you should be eating every day, um, but those are ones that would be appropriate for baking. Another reason we use oils is to saute, like I mentioned before. So not deep frying, but sauteing. So just a thin coat on a pan to brown something, to sear something, um, that is sauteing. You can use oils with lower smoke points for sauteing um, and ones that are more flavorful sometimes too, based on what you're cooking. We'll talk about some of those in a moment. Uh, so some options for this would be canola oil, extra virgin olive oil, um, peanut oil, sesame oil, those ones would be appropriate more for sauteing. And then one final way we use oils, of course, is like dressings and other non-cooking type of preparations. So oils that have low smoke points um, should be used for non-cooking preparations or also ones that are more flavorful. Um, so walnut oil is really flavorful and that one should be used for something like, like this. Uh, so some options other than that, walnut oil, flaxseed oil, and extra virgin olive oil, those are all good for those non-cooking preparations. I'm gonna take a sip of water. It's a little dry today. Continuing on now, again, let me know if you have any questions or comments during this, it's great. So we're gonna talk specifically about some of the individual oils. I'll have to flip my notes at some point, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, extra virgin olive oil. Um, we're we're going to talk about several different types of oil, but I'm going to start with the two that I recommend. So if you forget everything else I told you in this class, just remember the two that I recommend using. They pretty much can be used for any type of preparation, so that is great. Uh, I will say... Of the two, you could use one or the other for any type of preparation. One tends to be a little higher smoke point and one has a bit lower smoke point. I'm gonna shift my, shift my notes just a little bit so I can see them. Ooh, you can't see me. I have to read from notes or else I'll forget what to tell you and there's important stuff. So the first oil that we're talking about, of course, is extra virgin 
olive oil. That's one that I want you to remember. Um, this oil is one most touted as being heart healthy. You hear about this one a lot. Um, it's high in the healthy fats. So those would be the mono unsaturated fats. Um, it's high in those. Uh, but this one does have a relatively low smoke point. So as I said, not meant for frying stuff. Sauteing is fine. Um, we're typically not sauteing things at a really high temperature. Um, so sauteing and baking below about 375 is appropriate for um, olive oil. I'll say that again. Um, it can be added to, um, I'll start over. Extra virgin oil, olive oil can add really great flavor to a dish because it does tend to have a bit more of a distinctive flavor than like canola oil or vegetable oil do. So this is something that's nice if you want a little bit more of a unique flavor within a food. Um, sometimes it's added onto like hummus. It has kind of a special flavor. Um, but because of its low smoke point, it is best used for cooking below 375 degrees. Remember that, 375 degrees. If you are baking and your recipe is below 375, that's fine, like in the oven. Um, but again, it's not a neutral flavored oil. So um, you gotta make sure that you're making something that would be okay with an olive oil flavor. Um, and it's also, of course, great for non-cooked foods like dressings, um, pasta salad dressing, salad dressings. Um, I, I also want to make a point about extra virgin olive oil when you are shopping at the store. Extra virgin olive oil, you want it to say all of those words on the label. If it just says olive oil, that's not the same thing as extra virgin olive oil. It's different processing, so it's just different than a plain olive oil. I have my show and tell item. So this is an olive oil, of course. So it's an organic one. It doesn't make a huge difference if it's organic or not in the grand scheme of things, I guess we'd say, but this is the olive oil that I typically use. This is uh, from Trader Joe's. I think it says Trader Giotto's. It's clever with their little Italian, their Italian version of Trader Joe's. But this is 100% um, uh, extra virgin olive oil from Trader Joe's. This bottle is, what, 500 milliliters, 16.9 um, fluid ounces. Uh, I wanna say this entire bottle, size comparison, I think this entire bottle maybe is like five, five, six dollars maybe. What does it mean when it says, says cold press? Okay, I think I have the answer to this. I think I know the answer to this one. So cold, there are different, um, let me start over. Oil is not a whole food. Um, oil is always the product of processing in some way. There are many different ways that f plants, foods can be processed to create oils. So cold press is a type of processing. Um, it is a mechanical processing, so press, right? It is a physical processing to extract the oils out of olives, for example, um, whereas other types of oils can actually be processed chemically. And I actually have, I'll talk about that too with some of these oils. Um, so cold press just refers to the way that it was processed. Some people are really, really into this, really big on um, not doing any chemical processed oils um, and only ones that are mechanically pressed, cold pressed, that sort of thing. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, yeah, so extra virgin olive oil, you'll sometimes see cold pressed on there too. Um, that just means it wasn't processed with chemicals. Okay, so then the second oil that I want you to remember, the first was extra virgin olive oil, and the second, oh, and if you ever see light um, on your olive oil bottles, that refers to the flavor, um, like it has a lighter type of olive oil flavor. Sometimes um, there's a whole spectrum of, of extra virgin olive oils, but some have a stronger flavor than others. If it says light on it, that means it has less of a strong flavor. 
Now moving on to the second oil I want you to remember. If you are out shopping, this would be the other one to get. Avocado oil. This is somewhat of a newer oil, I guess you would say. It's become much more popular in recent years. Um, I don't I'm not that old, but I don't even remember hearing about avocado oil when I was growing up. So avocado oil actually does have a uh, high amount of those heart healthy monounsaturated fats, um, as does the extra virgin olive oil that we just talked about, but it has a much higher smoke point than the extra virgin olive oil. Um, avocado oil is kind of more towards the 400 degree realm. Um, depending, sometimes it could be a little higher, but at least to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, it's a little better for certain baked things. Um, it's also very neutral flavored. Um, it has almost no flavor to it. This is a bottle, so you can look at it. Um, and avocado oil in general has minimal processing to it. Um, so it's not like a chemically processed oil. Uh, it's usually. Um, it can be more on the expensive side. So typically, now I will say there are lots of olive oils that will be very expensive depending on the fanciness, um, but avocado oil tends to be a little bit more expensive just in the grocery store run of the mill. I think this one is, uh, it's the same size, the exact same size mm -hmm. as the olive oil bottle, but I want to say it's more in the nine nine to ten dollar range um this one i also purchased at trader joe's it's not a trader joe's brand but this one i did get from trader joe's as well next to the other olive oils um this actually says it has a 500 degree fahrenheit um smoke point so some of the avocado oils might have a little bit lower but this particular one the way it, the smoke point comes in sort of in the processing um, so the way that it's processed can help determine the smoke point. So this particular one is awesome because it has a really high smoke point. 500 is very high. Um, so it can be used for a lot of things. So you can also see expeller pressed um, right there. That again means it's a, it's a pressed type of processing, not a chemical processing. Okay, um, let's see if there's any other information I wanted to show you on here. Um, yeah, that's about that one right there. Um, nutrition info, if you're curious. Pretty much all oil has the same, give or take, maybe plus or minus 10 calories. Generally, the same type of calories and fat in um, a tablespoon. So comparing these two, 120 calories in a tablespoon of olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil, 130 calories in the avocado oil. I think it's the same amount of fat, right? 14 grams of fat. So generally about the same. Um, the amounts of the monounsaturated fat were the same as well. That's the healthy fat we like. And a little bit of polyunsaturated fat. They both are almost exactly the same. So those are the two options I want you to remember forever. <laughs> right, for what we have now as far as research goes. Now, I'm going to flip my notes because we have some other oils to discuss today. Ooh, you can't see me if I do that. Hold on. I'll get this figured out. Oh, there we go. All right. So, the other oils. I have uh, seven other oils actually to talk about, but we won't spend quite as much time on those. So, I don't have them necessarily in order of best to worst, but uh, I kind of have them in that order. Okay, so the next one we're talking about is canola oil. That one is a very popular oil. I know I grew up having canola oil um, used for pretty much everything it seemed like if it wasn't an olive oil. Um, so canola oil is made from a plant called the rapeseed plant. It's from the flowers of the rapeseed plant. Um, it's low in that unhealthy saturated fat. I think um, it's actually, I wanna say it is actually the lowest of all the oils that we're really talking about today um, in saturated fat. So even, even the avocado oil and the olive oil have a small amount of saturated fat. All oils just do kind of have a little bit of it naturally, 
plant oils will have way less saturated fat than animal-based oils or fats, I guess you would say, than animal-based fats. Um, the one exception is coconut oil, which we'll talk about later. Um, so canola oil, low, low in saturated fat. Um, it has a somewhat higher smoke point, uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but it is chemically processed. Um, so it has that smoke point because of the chemical processing, um, which like I said, some people don't prefer their oils to be chemically chemically processed. Uh, pretty much all canola oil in America is chemically processed, okay? Um, a lot of fried foods that you might get from various places are um, fried in canola oil. It's a very typical oil that people fry in, okay? Um, the next one is actually kind of a combination of two oils, peanut oil and sesame oil. They're sort of in that same realm, same sort of talking points about them. Um, these oils have more unique flavors. So peanut oil tastes like peanuts, sesame oil tastes like sesame seeds. So um, they have relatively high smoke points as well though, which is nice. So you can do um, sauteing with these, uh, typically like a peanut or sesame oil would be used in maybe more of an Asian type of preparation for food. Um, they're not really oils you'd use on an everyday basis because they do taste like peanut and sesame. Um, I don't really like sesame oil because I don't like sesame seeds. So um, they taste like they are. Um, but they are nice to add in sometimes, um, every once in a while for spe special dishes. Um, like if you're making stir fry or pad thai or whatever it is at home. Um, they're not like, um, they're not crazy unhealthy oils. Um, we just don't use them very much because they're weird, weird flavors. Molly said something. Just gonna see if it'll let me read it all. There we go. Molly says she looked at what she thought was extra virgin olive oil. Ah, interesting, right? So Molly says she just looked at what she thought was her extra virgin olive oil, but it says it's only actually 15% extra virgin olive oil and the rest is refined olive oil. So that's exactly what I mean. So Molly, maybe even that oil you're using um, is maybe okay for frying because it's not actually extra virgin olive oil. It's a refined olive oil, not the extra virgin. So um, if I were you, I would probably pick maybe some avocado oil to do actual frying in and get a real extra virgin olive oil for the other stuff. Molly also says sesame oil has a strong flavor. Yeah, sesame oil does have a very strong flavor. Um, it's Again, it's not something you use very much. I think my mom has a bottle of it and I think she's had it like for quite a while. <laughs> The thing to remember about oils, too, is that they do go rancid, okay? Um, they don't last forever. They go rancid. So you may want to check expiration dates or the smell. It'll smell rancid if it is, okay? All right. Moving on to the next, I have another two oils combined in this next one as well. So walnut oil and flaxseed oil. Again, those are ones that we don't use a lot of. Those are not very common. I don't know if I've ever used walnut oil. Um, flaxseed oil maybe once, okay? Um, these have very unique flavors as well. Um, and they are actually not good for cooking at all. We don't cook with walnut oil or with flaxseed oil because they have very low smoke points. Um, those types of oils, the walnut and the flaxseed, should only be used for the non-cooked preparation, so dressings or drizzling over certain things, um, not cooking. Those are both healthy oils. Um, in the realm of oil, I guess, if we're talking about healthy. Uh, in the spectrum of oils, walnut and flaxseed are healthy oils, um, but you shouldn't be cooking with them. If you're cooking with them, it, number one, changes the flavor, but it also would create the free radicals from that process of like high heat, the smoking. Um, so we don't want that. Just a side note, smoking, that's where um, the, so the smoke point is when the oil smokes and burns. Um, smoking meat actually creates tons of free radicals. So in, in like a smoker or in a barbecue, like with the lid down and it's smoking, 
Um, tons of free radicals are created uh, from smoking meat. Just a little side note about that. So be careful when you're doing that. All right, next oil. Oh wait, Annette said something for baking, which oil would you substitute for canola oil? Um, good question. So um, as a substitute for canola, I mean, you can use canola oil um, unless you're baking like at a really high temperature. Um, avocado oil is my go-to uh, lately. That's the one that I prefer to use the most because it does have that higher smoke point. So you can bake it pretty much any temperature and the neutral flavor is great. I never have any weird flavors from the avocado oil. So that's kind of my go-to um, for baking, like baked goods. Yeah. Um, okay. Coconut oil is the next one we're talking about. That is quite the popular topic in the last few years. Um, I will say coconut oil is a, it's really good to bake with. It is. Um, coconut oil has a high smoke point. Um, it's, it's become so popular in recent years. Um, of people say it's the cure-all for everything and anything, um, but in reality, it's not. Um, it has some uses. It's a great lotion. I will say that. Um, but as a food, it's not like the miracle food that we should all be eating every day, only that um, unlike the other plant oils, um, coconut oil contains a very large amount of saturated fat. Um, the type of saturated fat is actually medium chain triglycerides is what it's called, um, which is different than the type of saturated fat found in animal fats. So there is a difference between the saturated fat in coconut oil versus like butter or steak. <laughs> um, so there's that difference, but the, and so the body does process the medium chain triglycerides slightly differently than it does the saturated fat from animal sources. Um, but the bottom line is that coconut oil can raise both our good cholesterol, the HDL, and the bad cholesterol, the LDL. Uh, I know that more research is really needed on this topic, but there has been research that shows it raises both levels of cholesterol. Um, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So I don't really recommend coconut oil as an everyday type of food. Um, like I said, it is good for baking though because of its smoke point. Um, it is it is good for that, especially if you want something that has more of a coconut flavor to it. Um, but the high saturated fat content is not ideal. So I I have a few recipes for my in my arsenal that I use coconut oil for, but they're not everyday recipes. It's like a cookie recipe. Okay. Um, the next one, I have three more oils to talk about. The next one is vegetable oil. This one is so, so, uh, so much of a standard uh, everywhere. Um, vegetable oil. Okay. This oil is similar to canola oil in that it is chemically processed. All vegetable oil is chemically processed. Um, and it has a high smoke point, um, at least up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So vegetable oil is frequently used for frying as well. Um, the term vegetable oil uh, can actually refer to an oil from pretty much any plant source. Um, it's not just a specific one vegetable. Um, so typical vegetable oils are a blend of many types of oils, um, usually canola, corn, soybean, safflower, safflower, palm, and sunflower oils, usually some um, percentage of those mixed in with a vegetable oil. Uh, manufacturers can put any combination of those oils in, in any amount. Um, they never really have to change their labels because they just list all those oils and says that's what it is. They don't list specific amounts. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing for health concerns. Um, vegetable oil is not one that I typically recommend to be using much of when we have better options out there for frying, sauteing, and baking. Okay. Um, but again, if you go to like restaurants, typically a vegetable oil is what is used to fry stuff or canola oil. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, 
All right, the next oil we're talking about is sunflower oil. That one's probably not one that you buy a lot of, um, but it is pretty widely available. I know Trader Joe's sells it. Um, it's high in vitamin E, uh, very high in vitamin E, which is an antioxidant, uh, but it also actually contains a very high uh, concentration of omega-6 fatty acids. Um, omega-3 fatty acids are the ones that we typically talk about for um, that raise our good cholesterol. Oh, omega-6 fatty acids are similar. Um, we do need some amount of omega-6 fatty acids um, for in our bodies, uh, but too much can actually be inflammatory for our bodies, um, just overall inflammatory, and that is not something that we want. Inflammation in the body is not a good thing. Um, moderation is important with sunflower oil. Uh, we don't want to throw off the, um, the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids in the body. Too much omega-6 fatty acids will cause more inflammation in the body. Um, so not my recommendation as a go-to oil. It is decently neutral flavored, so baking with it is fine. Um, but because of its high omega-6, we don't want to eat a lot of that oil. Molly says that they fry french fries at in and out in sunflower, sunflower oil. I believe that. Um, I, I don't know if I would say it's a healthier oil than... Vegetable oil, I would say, is not not necessarily a healthy oil. Um, canola and sunflower oil maybe kind of run parallel to each other. Um, yeah, sunflower oil, it just has a lot of omega-6 fatty acids in it. So we really have to be careful with that because we can cause inflammation in our body. It's better than soybean oil, Molly says, yeah. <laughs> I will agree with that, that um, sunflower oil is better than soybean oil. I'm not talking about soybean oil specifically today. I didn't have that one listed, but soybean oil is not one that I would recommend cooking with. Soybean oil um, is decently processed, and um, we don't need to be eating tons and tons of soy. So I would not choose that one as an everyday oil. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. The last oil we're talking about today is palm oil. Now, palm oil is high, very high. It's one of, it's kind of like coconut oil. Those tropical oils is what they're called. Uh, palm oil is very high in that unhealthy saturated fat um, and should be avoided uh, if at all possible. Palm oil should not really be in our diet. Okay. Uh, typically, you don't really just go buy palm oil at the store. Uh, more frequently, it's, it's really used as an ingredient in foods, uh, pro processed and packaged foods. Um, you don't yeah, really just go buy a bottle of palm oil. Uh, so a lot of products you will see these days include palm oil as an ingredient. Um, an example of that I can think off the top of my head is peanut butter. Peanut butters are notorious for having palm oil added to them because that's what makes them easy to stir. Uh, so if you're buying a peanut butter, I recommend one that does not contain palm oil because it's just adding saturated fat, basically no real nutrients that we need. Um, so palm oil, out of there. We don't need any of that. Um, oh, Molly said, we don't eat french fries all the time. Yeah. I mean, french fries are a fried food, so it's not something we should be eating as an everyday occurrence. Um, so once in a while, having french fries fried in sunflower oil is not the end of the world. Um, if it was every day, then I would say that is not what we should be doing. But yeah. Okay. As I conclude this discussion about oils, which has been actually very interesting to me, um, I want to take a moment to say that it is best to limit oil intake in general, okay? Oils are very calorie dense, um, meaning that there are a lot of calories packed into a small volume of food. Uh, so they're not ideal for weight loss or weight management or for our overall health. We don't need to eat oils. Okay? We need to eat fat, but we don't necessarily need to eat oils. To illustrate this, I have a little infographic on calorie density that I wanted to show you. So, 
I hopefully you can see that. Got some reflection. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. Hopefully that you can read. So the white images on this are obviously uh, stomachs. Okay. Those are our stomachs and each one is filled with 500 calories of a different food. So you'll notice that the stomach with fruits and veggies over here, you'll notice that the stomach with the fruits and veggies is completely full with 500 calories. That's because those foods are not calorie dense. Veg vegetables and fruits have, especially the vegetables, have low amounts of calories uh, for a larger amount of food. So those are not calorie dense, okay? So within each progressing image, you see the potatoes, rice, beans, the meat, the cheese, there, and then finally all the way up to the oil. Um, the stomach is less and less full from each type of food all the way down to oil. And this is all 500 calories, okay? Each one is 500 calories in the stomach volume-wise, okay? So like I had said, oil is very calorie dense, so it doesn't take up very much space. Um, 500 calories is a very small amount. 500, if you remember those labels we were reading, the nutrition labels, um, one tablespoon of avocado oil is 130 calories. So with four tablespoons, that's a fourth of a cup, by the way, a fourth of a cup is almost all the way to 500 calories, and that does not fill up your stomach very much. Your stomach will not feel full on 500 calories of oil. That can actually then, of course, lead to eating way more calories than the body needs in order to have a full feeling stomach. We all want to feel full when we eat, uh, especially if you're trying to lose weight. You don't like feeling hungry. No one likes feeling hungry. And we don't want to feel extra hungry when you're trying to lose weight. So eating foods that are less calorie dense. So on the fruit, vegetable, potato, bean spectrum of those stomachs, um, you can eat larger volumes um, for fewer calories compared to the oil, the cheese, and the meats. Um, oil is not helpful when you're trying to lose weight or manage your weight. All right, off of my soapbox on that one. So, in general, just to conclude today, um, there are healthy types of oils out there in the spectrum of oils, avocado and extra virgin olive oil. Those would be the two best to choose, avocado for higher heat, uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil for the lower heat or for non-cooked preparations. Um, keeping your oil intake low in general is helpful for weight management and for overall health. If you want to get more fat in your diet or make sure you're getting enough fat in your diet, it's better to choose things like olives, avocados, nuts, and seeds rather than pure oil. But there are a couple healthier options that we can choose from. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed today's class. I really enjoyed talking about this topic of oils. Um, I think Claudia might have been the one that suggested it last month. So thank you, Claudia. If you have any um, questions, please let me know in the comment section. I can see those live or the recorded version later on. And if you have any requests for a topic for next month, I would love to hear it. Um, thank you, Molly. Thank you, Annette, everybody else watching. Uh, if you have, I think Lori was watching too. <laughs> Maybe Claudia. Um, if you have any suggestions for a topic next month, let me know and next week will be the carb smart class so if you have any uh requests for a specific topic for carb smart let me know on that too uh tomorrow we have no online exercise class um, strength training i will be live in person <laughs> hi claudia good well i will be live in person at the fitness center so if you're a member over there come see me at 9 a.m for strength training class would love to have you there um, six people in the class and we'll all be spaced apart nicely and sweat a little bit there okay bye everyone laura uh, laura Lori, claudia molly and annette and whoever else is watching <laughs> i will see you guys next time happy wednesday